His name's Lamar Wilson, like he said. Um, I know you guys are probably thinking, how many people here have iPhones? Exactly, everybody in here. Um, you're probably thinking, like, number one, you're probably thinking you wanted to shoot your iPhone at first. Did you all want to do that? How many people were thinking about switching to Android? This week, you're thinking about doing it this week? Well, hopefully, we'll stop you from doing that. Um, the iPhone wallet has been a problem for some time, right? Uh, there used to be a lot of them on the on the, the App Store, but then all of a sudden, Apple started getting cold feet. Um, I'm not nobody knows why, but they started uh, basically picking them off one by one. And I think about two weeks ago, the blockchain.info, which is probably the longest one, longest running one on there, uh, got picked off. So me being the person that I am, uh, my business partner being the person that he is, uh, when you don't come from a lot, when you don't have a lot, you start figuring out solutions that are very creative um, because you know you got to learn to hood rig things sometimes. Um, but we didn't have to hood rig too much. We did everything completely legal. So you're probably asking me, um, how in the world can I get a native, not a web app, a native Bitcoin application on my iOS device? The solution is potluck capitalism. We coined a phrase called potluck capitalism. So you guys are probably like, what the heck does that mean? Well, basically, when we thought about it, we, um, one of the number one things we thought about was it's a, it's a mean injustice in this country that the government kind of advertises the lottery to the poorest people. Um, they kind of like tell the poorest people like, here's the lottery, you might as well, if somebody's gonna win, it might as well be you. But in the same breath, they won't let those same poor people invest in companies and start up companies. That's an injustice. Like, that, that's crazy to me. So what do we started thinking? Um, how in the world can we get anybody, not just poor people, uh, people in the 1% too, we take your money and, you know, get your iPhone wallet as well. But how can we get those people an iOS device and also let them share in with us? So what we did was started the Cycle of Goodness Cooperative. So the Cycle of Goodness Cooperative is a cooperative made up of members who own an I iOS device. And all you have to do is pay your membership Pay a membership fee, an annual membership fee, and have our wallet. So you're probably thinking to yourself, well, how does that work? Well, a cooperative, if, if everyone knows, is a place where everyone comes together. If you know about credit unions, everyone comes together, makes votes. They can do things together and work together to make something better. And the cooperative, the Cycle of Goodness Cooperative, allows you to have this wallet, and then inside the wallet, there are spaces for people to advertise, and those spaces allow everyone in the cooperative to make money. Now, we get advertised to constantly, like all the time, but how many of those advertisers put money back in your pocket? How many? Zero, Zero right? So it's like, we're going to give you an opportunity. All you have to do is have the wallet, provide that little bit of ad space, and that ad space is extremely valuable to people who have Bitcoin. So like Overstock, they want to advertise the people they know have Bitcoin. What better way to tell if a person has Bitcoin than to be inside their wallet? And so we're going to give the majority of that income back to those people inside of that cooperative. So now all of a sudden, big, uh, Overstock spends money with the car cooperative, they put ads in there, you, you buy some of Overstock, it goes back to Overstock, right? Overstock says, well shoot, this is working. They're gonna put money back in, you buy again. So what winds up happening is this cycle of goodness, right? We're, we are all going to work together to make it better for everyone. And you're like, okay, so what's that have to do with me and this wallet? Well, what we introduced at Love Wheel, Love Wheel is actually a, a company that is separate of Cycle of Goodness, and Love Wheel's main customer is the Cycle of Goodness. Love Wheel creates applications for the Cycle of Goodness. We introduced the Fever Wallet. Now, some of you all may have seen the Fever Chrome extension we launched on Reddit probably about a month ago. Um, really fun Chrome extension. What we did with the Fever Wallet, we did something different. Um, inside of the Fever Wallet, we have what you call coin IDs. As you can see, um, we have Henry Earl, who's, what's his real name? His nickname is James Brown, that's his coin ID. So inside of our wallet, you can pay Henry Earl just by paying to James Brown. 
inside of the coin ID. Now think about it. Now all of a sudden you have this cooperative and everybody's working together and everybody has a really easy way to pay one another and you have a way to make income because another thing, another uh, problem is right now people don't know how to get Bitcoin. People want to, they got to go to Coinbase, which is a good way to go, but you got to go to Coinbase and give up a first child maybe. Um, you got to give up a lot of information, right? just to get some Bitcoin. But in this situation, you're not paying for the Bitcoin, you're actually selling your ad space on your wallet for the Bitcoin, so those advertisers will give you some Bitcoin. And this, uh, this wallet is protected by a pin, so it's very secure. Everything is client side. We don't store any of your wallet stuff except, except that it's encrypted on the server. So it's about like blockchain.info, if everyone's familiar with blockchain.info, how they allow you to create and sign and everything on the client, um, and they store your encrypted data, data so that you can move that around. That's the same thing we do. We believe in being on the blockchain and not off the blockchain, so all of your transactions go directly to the blockchain. So I want to introduce to you all the most beautiful iPhone, our most beautiful, I should say, most beautiful Bitcoin wallet you've ever seen. When we thought about making this wallet, the first individual we thought about was my dear old mom. No, not old. If you're recording this, not old. My dear beautiful mom. Okay? You're not old, mom. We thought about her because this Christmas I gave my mom some Bitcoin. And she's like, what the heck? Then she looked at the price and it went up and she's like, what the heck? Right? So, and now she's probably like, what the heck again? <laughs> she don't get what's going on. But it's not a real easy way for her to be able to use her wallet because it's a lot of things. Um, I'm a geek. I'm a card carrying geek. I am. But we tend to not do things exactly perfect for like normal folk like my mom. Like everybody understands their Bitcoin wallet straight up and down. But something like this, something like, as a matter of fact, I saw another one that came out recently. I'm going to go ahead and advertise it. KNC Miner. I think it's those guys over there. They made a, a wallet. It makes it a little bit easier. The only difference is those guys aren't going to give you anything back. Um, <laughs> yeah, they, they didn't give me any, so I'm mad. Um, no, I'm just kidding. No, but um, those, those wallets, I think, is what's going to push the, the thing, uh, push Bitcoin into the future. If you see, uh, basically, when you get the wallet, you have to verify that you're a COG member. So you're probably asking, how in the world does that help me get it on my iOS device? Well, I, uh, Apple has a simple thing called an enterprise license. And an enterprise license allows you to distribute to people within your organization. So the number one thing you have to have is an organization. And then you have, look at this guy. You're loving it, aren't you? I see it in your face. You have to have an organization. And the next thing you have to have are members of that organization. So what we're doing is we're creating an organization, a cooperative, because the thing about a cooperative, most, most of these companies out here are not going to want to give anything back to you. I'm just going to let you know. Uh, they have investors that are putting a lot of money up. I mean, and the investors want their money back. In this situation, you know who we want to help us get where we're going? It's you. And if you help us get to where we're going, we're going to help you get to where you're going. It's going to be this symbiotic relationship. It is a symbiotic relationship where Love Will LLC works with the car cooperative in unison. And we all work together to make this thing better for everyone. And we provide great software, great looking software. Wait till you get it. Every time someone's seen it, they're like, this is the best iOS wallet I've ever seen. So you see it's really easy, there goes your pen. That's the main screen. Makes it really easy for you to share. So you're looking at this share screen and you're thinking, okay, what does that mean? Well, if you share the application, then if anybody knows about cooperatives, you get what's called patronage points. And because this is a marketing cooperative, every time you share that application, you start getting points into the system. So when the advertisers put money back into the system, your patronage points determine how much you get from the advertisers. So if you help get more ad space by marketing the application, then guess what? You get more patronage points, which means you get more of the share of the revenue that's coming in. If, if you decide you want to do that, you automatically get a patronage point just for joining. So you automatically get one. But if you want to work really hard, go get a team together, and you guys go out, or girls go out, and go out there and get more people on the system, we're going to reward you for that because guess what? The network effect is real. The more people you bring onto the system, every single node makes the network even better. 
Does everybody understand that about the network effect? Every node on the system, when you add a new node, it makes the entire network better. And so what we're doing is we're allowing everybody to work together. And like I said, it's not normal capitalism. This is potluck capitalism. Everybody brings some food to the table. We all eat, and I enjoy eating. <laughs> I just do. And the great thing about potluck capitalism is just like with a potluck. How many times have you ever run out of everything on the table? It never happens, right? There's always still a little bit left to go around. So that's what we're doing. We're building something that's probably a little bit different than normally what you see even in the business world. Because our whole idea is not for us to just make it rich and try to go buy a yacht and everything. We want everyone, every single person to benefit from this. Everybody who works with us, we want to work with you from here until the end of time. And we want to allow everyone to have a chance to do something different because, like I said before, the government will not allow you to invest in a business if you're not an accredited investor. And a lot of times that's like $250,000 of income, a million dollars net worth. And when I thought about that, the people I grew up around, the people I grew up with, they don't have that. So even if I wanted to go holler at them and say, listen, invest in my company, uh, I might mess around and be locked up or something. But in this situation, we're giving back. Because we want to help them, they help us, we all work together. It's different, it's a whole different way of thinking. It's a whole different way of, of approaching a business. It's a whole different way of just going on with your life. And I know the thing is about Bitcoin that really hit me, you guys, is the freedom part. And just realizing that you have freedom to program your own money. I created, myself and Leif created this wallet in three months. It took us about three months and it was a sad job because we got kids we got to eat so we created this wallet but it, it showed the kind of freedom you could have if you were able to move your own money and protect your own money and, and send it around and that's why all of us are here so now instead of us just thinking about that we can also think about growing together and working together to make this place a lot better and even the KNC minor guys I keep giving you a shout out man I'm gonna need some Bitcoin in my wallet all right <laughs> Um, and while I'm up here, I wanted to tell what these signs are for. In Kentucky, um, I, I guess you guys know we're one of the um, And these signs, Tech Base 10 is an initiative by the Kentucky Innovation Network that they're teaching people about Bitcoin. I'm one of the people that speaks around the state. So we're teaching people just about Bitcoin to change them from coal mining into script mining or Bitcoin mining or whatever, right? We're changing the, the old school miners Miners. And we're going around the, the state and doing that. So I just wanted to, to highlight that because this is a, a collegiate program. Basically, uh, the Eastern Kentucky University and Moorhead State, they're, they're teaming up with us to teach the state about Bitcoin. I mean, we can do this together, everyone. I mean, the freedom that I saw in Bitcoin, we can all do it together. So now you're still waiting for the big piece. How do I get this Bitcoin wallet? This gentleman in front of me, I talked to him before. He said, I need to get a Bitcoin wallet. I don't have one on my iOS device. So that's where you go. Go to codcoop.com slash trial. And when you do that, you'll probably get to a screen that says the Texas Bitcoin Conference free membership trial. When you do that, you'll register. It'll verify your email, send you an email. And from there, you'll click that register. And in the back end, once you become a member of the COD Cooperative, in the back end, we have a link that you can click that says iOS. Once you click that link, you will see it say, do you want to install this application? It's that easy. It really is that easy. People are switching their phones. There's no need to switch your phone. And I'm telling you right now, you'll love our application. It's very beautiful. We also have a Chrome extension that we made. Um, we launched it on Reddit, like I said. So you can take that same coin ID, the coin ID that you make, and use it on uh, the Chrome extension. And it does some of the things similar to what the CryptoKit does by finding addresses on the screen. So it makes it really easy, one click easy. Um, if you go on YouTube, you'll see me real late night. My voice changes 100 times, but it's still me uh, making these little small videos about how to use the wallet in the Chrome extension. So now, today, we're launching the iOS wallet, and we're launching the Chrome wallet to the rest of the world. And I want you guys to just, just look into it. It's free. 
download it, go to the trial, go through the steps. If you have a problem, it's easy to find us. We have on huge red shirts, and I don't see too many other people with red shirts on around right now anyway. We'll have these red shirts on for the rest of the week. We'll have red shirts on. If you see us in South by Southwest, if you see a big black guy with a red shirt on, it's not the Kool-Aid man, it's me. <laughs> okay? So if you all have any questions, um, whatever you want to ask, shoot, and I'm ready for it. Any questions? Yeah, what's going on? It is built in love. No, it's, it's, it's built in HTML5. Yeah, it is. And this is like MDM back end? MDM. Yeah, what do you? It's all right. What, what did you ask? Huh? Yeah, M do you say MDM? Does it use MDM at all? Tell me what that is. Uh, basically, for iOS apps, it's what uh, enterprise solutions use. Like if I'm um, Symantec or whatever and I have to issue 100,000 phones to my employees, I can oh, put no, no, in native no, no, app. No, 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 no. This is a pure download. Like you're talking about ad hoc. It's not, it's not an ad hoc. So I don't have to give you a license or anything. You just go to it. Just try it. You got an iPhone? Yeah. Yeah, see, that's the thing. Everyone, it's not ad hoc at all. You don't have to have a license. You don't have to come get a license from us. You literally join the jo uh, join the cooperative and then click the button and get the application. Now, this uh, trial will be over in March the 21st. So you'll have it for a while. You'll get to keep it for a while. Play around with it. All you have to do is email me at hello at fever.com. You can get directly to me at hello. I am hello right now. Uh, so hello at fever.com. You can get to me. Yeah, go ahead. I might have missed this, but how do you get around the restriction, the Apple restriction? Okay, so it is enterprise software. We have a cooperative, a legal cooperative in the state of Kentucky that anyone can join if they pay a membership and have our application. So Apple has enterprise software development program where we can distribute to our people in our organization. And it's, a, it's like us having our own proprietary software. And the private key remains on the it device? Re it remains on the device. Okay. The only is there a one-click backup to, like, Google Drive or something like that? That's We're building that. Okay. Right now, there's not. Letting everyone know that. And that's why we push the Fever wallet as a hot wallet. That's a good question. Right. We're building, like, backups. We're building what we call an Exodus address that will allow people to quickly and easily understand that. Because, like, my mom, she don't have none of that stuff you're talking about, there's right? There's no forgot my password. Yeah. If, yeah, if you forget your okay. password... It's gone. Like, pretty much. It's just like blockchain. Blockchain.info. That's why you need to make sure you protect your wallet because I don't want your wallet. Right? I don't want to have You don't anything. want the risk of holding your Yeah, I don't want wallet. the risk of holding it, and I don't want it. Like, I'm not trying to have you've been fevered and have Andreas and all of these guys <laughs> up here sitting. You know what I'm saying? I'm not trying to have that. So we want to, and truthfully, that's our, our whole idea is to give the power back to you. Like we're going to, like I said, we're going to build things that allow you to have, get your private keys and leave whenever you want to because we want to give the power back to you because that's what was powerful for me. Like, you know, yeah, keep asking. Follow up. So on the terms of service for enterprise apps for Apple that you are work, that you're operating under, yeah. there, is there a way that they can yank that from the, so from the store? So when I, when I called, we, uh, Leif and I called Apple. We talked to them, talked to the enterprise support people. Um, the thing is, is that, think about Symantec, uh, Cisco, they all have proprietary software. So Apple's not going to go to Cisco and say, Cisco, you can't do this with your software, right? They're not going to do that because, think about it. It's like, why would you, you and if they do it to me, they got to do it to everybody else. You got to go out and get everybody's software. That's what the license says. I'm liable. So if the government says, hey, you developing this application, which FinCEN already came out and said it's okay to develop these apps. If the government comes back, it's on me. It's not on Apple. And that's pretty much what they're doing. They're like, look, this guy signed off and said he's the guy. Not us. He's the guy. He has to take responsibility. And I will take the ultimate responsibility to make sure as many people can benefit from this as possible. Yeah. Another question, Lamar? So it would be anti-pragmatic for Apple to try to quash this because it uses systems that other big companies are using. Yeah. And it's an all-or-nothing decision. Yeah. So, yeah, it literally was – like, we were just being as creative as possible. Um like I said, sometimes you got to hood rig things. It's just a word. Um, some, no, seriously, you have to really think outside the box. Like uh, Leif and I own a company called 212, and our our, uh, our mantra is where others see obstacles, we see opportunity. So it's like even in this situation, that picture that you saw, the guy shooting the phone, 
we were like, man, listen, you can't you can't think in out, like inside the box like that and be like it's all over. <laughs> shoot your phone like you have to really take a problem and figure out a solution from a different angle when like I said a lot of capitalists are not going to want to go the ain't the route we went like we know that we know a lot of people are not going to just give away a lot of their revenue profits that kind of thing to other people but that's how we are like I love potlucks period yeah you must be a developer you're not a developer so what you just described is MDM uh uh, tech, and I guess my question is, are you all licensed as a dev from Apple, and would your users be considered employees in this scenario? No, they are they are literally considered members. So if you have a nonprofit and you want to send out like applications just to the people who are nonprofit people, then that's what you can do. So, so you, yo, go ahead, Life, you got the answer. You got a. Hey, you got to come up here, cause. Yeah, you can come up. This is Leif Taylor. He's actually the uh, he's actually the president of the Cog Cooperative. <laughs> yeah, this is the reason why we have a time trial is because you legally have to be a member of the cooperative in order to maintain the license. Right. So we give a time trial to let you try it, but we have to take that back if you don't become a member of the co-op. Yeah, if you don't become a member, then we can't keep you with the application. We put a. So you are. You do have permission from Apple to build this solution? Yeah. Like, it's not, okay, it's not direct permission. It's permission by way of the license. You understand what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, so you're, that's what I'm asking. Yeah, you're, yeah, yeah. You, by way of the license, the way the license agreement is, we can build applications for the members in our cooperative. Have you all thought at all about uh, any, like, potential lawsuits that could stem from this? Yeah, I mean. I mean, I'm just curious. I'm an entrepreneur, man. Answer. Somebody can sue you for anything. They can sue me because I got a red shirt on, and I'm in <laughs> Texas. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I'm not worrying about any of that stuff. Like, I worry about it a little bit. I have lawyers. As a matter of fact, I've been talking to lawyers forever. I actually had to go get a guy, an older gentleman who's been doing cooperatives for a long time, mostly agricultural, because, though, like, nobody does cooperatives. We tried to file at the state, and they didn't even really know what to do because some of the people were, like, cooperative. We don't get this stuff all the time, right? Because who does that anymore? Nobody really works together like that anymore. Credit unions are cooperatives, but, you know, nobody really does it that way. Yeah. I, I assume they didn't volunteer any um – uh, Apple, uh, in this case, didn't volunteer any information about not changing the terms of service. Of course, one of the terms of the terms of service is we can always yeah, we change can do the it terms. Whenever, yeah. So uh, they didn't. Did you tell them that, that this was a co-op for? So yeah, we told uh, them cryptocurrency. We, yeah. So we we didn't tell them it was a co-op for cryptocurrency. We just told them it was a, no. We told them it was a co-op. No, I'm serious because well, I, I just see that as the risk of them changing the terms. And saying, yeah, and if they oh, and if, yeah, oh, and if they change it, no then if they change that, then we'll give it back. I mean, for for us, like everybody's gonna keep throwing arrows and like, oh gosh, if they do this. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like, oh, gosh, oh, oh, my goodness. But for us, it's not about the fear. Like, we have to do what we have to do right now, and it works right now. So, I mean, when that boat comes, then we'll hit it. And here's the thing. Your your stuff is not at risk. Your Bitcoins, none of that's at risk. The only person at risk is the whole cooperative as far as us sharing the, the information. But, I mean, based on the, the, legal, the legalities of the license, if they change it, then okay. So, Sheldon from Houston. Hey, Sheldon, what's going on? Well, hello, hello. How you doing? Good, good. Uh, I'm Sheldon Weiss with Coin Vault ATM. So just a comment and then the, and the question to you. You talked about how to buy uh, Bitcoin today with a Coin Vault ATM. You can go with a $100 bill. Yeah. Mama can go in there. Th four things she carries with her probably is her cell phone, her face, her palm, and a pen. Right. And with those four things, she can buy real time a Bitcoin. Right. Or a fraction of a Bitcoin. Right. And she can put that on your wallet. Immediately. Immediately. Right. We need to work together. Like cat quit. Yeah. Like cat quick. Right. So now she's got it. But my question is, I got a short-term opportunity to use your app. And obviously, I'm going to promote to all the Apple people out there that are stuck right. on Apple that now you can have a wallet, that you can go to a Coin Vault ATM and buy some coin. Yeah. But you got to be a member. Right. So the question you haven't addressed is, so what does it cost to be a member of your cooperative? It is $10. Like, literally, it's very cheap. Once again, thinking about my mama. $10. That's all it costs. We're not charging $100 a year. It's $10 per year for you to become a member. That's it. $10. Um, and we're trying to do some other things with that right now, but right now it's $10. Um, and you can sign up, get the trial. Really and truthfully right now we're just trying to educate folks because this potluck capitalism idea is like one that a lot of people haven't really 
dealt with. Because the other part of that is is that as more members get into the cooperative, they're going to own a share of Love Wheel. The problem with cooperatives is you can't take them public, which means you don't get all the benefits of entrepreneurship, right? But because the cooperative is going to own a piece of our company, of Love Wheel, then Love Wheel can go public. And Love Wheel can, as an owner, they can get a percentage of that back to the cooperative. And th like I said, we only thinking about people, like truthfully. I mean, everybody doesn't have access in this country. Um, everybody doesn't have an opportunity to, to get that access immediately. And so we're just trying to provide access as quickly as we possibly can. Like everybody don't have access. I don't have access to invest in companies. I'm not a accredited investor, so. Yeah, um, I wish we I wish you repeat like, that question for us. Okay, Lamar. yeah, he said, "Is it fully functional? Can you spend the bitcoins from the app?" Yes, you can get bitcoins in. Uh, let me see if I go back to a slide. So if you see, it's it's very simple. It's either load or send. Uh, the the button on this side. Let me go over here. The button here, that's the load button. That's the send button. When you hit send, it takes you to this contact list. You can put in a Bitcoin address. You can even scan. So you can scan a Bitcoin address. And that's the problem. Like a lot of people are use, doing the, uh, the, the web apps, which are cool. Like I really appreciate the fact that they're doing that. But inside a web app, you can't scan. You can't scan a Bitcoin address. So that's why natively, we, as long as we have the native app, we can do that kind of stuff with it. So. <laughs> Anybody else? Any more questions? Come on, stand up if you would. One more. <laughs> this is a personal question. Can I quote you on potluck capitalism? Yes. All right. Potluck capitalism. I love that. I hope more people, somebody asked me one time, they were like, uh, what if more cooperatives pop up? What about their competition? Well, my thing is, if all businesses thought about their customers, let everybody have a potluck capitalism. Don't you just love walking down the street and like, hey, man, come on in, get some barbecue, right? Same thing, man. Like, it literally is. It's just a whole different mentality, and we're just trying to give it to the world. Yeah. That's why I love Wheel, right? So because on the Android side, we don't have the issue that you guys are jumping over, Yeah. Um, a lot of the wallets are open source, so it's easy to, to audit. Right, To right. make sure that, you know, there's not some right. um, uh, bad actor code within it. Are you guys going to open that up to the cooperative? So, Yes. So what? here's the thing that we're going to do. Like We have pretty much opened it up. If you look at the Chrome extension, um, if you know anything about code, you can look at all the code and see it. It's the same. Yeah. But the, but the native code is, is exactly the same, to be honest. It's, it's almost literally the same. Um, and if you look at it, it's the same thing. The thing is, uh, of us being on the blockchain, this is the thing Paul Snow asked me. But then he hurried up and corrected himself because he was like, if you guys are taking money out and sending it somewhere else, and then he goes, oh, but it'll be on the blockchain. Like you will be able to see it immediately. You make that transaction. If you see a transaction go somewhere it's not supposed to go, quickly you know who to call. Uh, our address is 498 Georgetown Street, Lexington, Kentucky, 40508. Like you know exactly where to go. We're not some company in Slovenia or something that just like made a wallet and threw it out there. You know to come get us. And once again, like I said, we take the responsibility. We take all the risk. So, I mean, you know who we are. It's just like I, I put a, a quote on, um, I asked on Reddit, I was like, why does everyone trust Coinbase, right? I know why they do it, but I just wanted to see what people thought. Like, no, Coinbase is not open source, but a million people have trusted them with their wallet. And the thing is, you don't even get your private keys, like, on Coinbase. You know what I'm saying? So you trust in them. You trust in the bank with your money. So for us, you know where we are. I'm going to be there. You can come find me. I can't go too far. I don't have a whole lot of money. You understand what I'm saying? So, yeah, you just, yeah. Bad actors within. Yeah. yeah. I'm more, more worried about bad actors getting into the code somehow, whether that's yes. an employee that puts in bad code right. and distributes it out, updates everybody's app, and all the transactions for 24 hours until you right. guys figure it out are going to some black hole. And but, I mean, you run that yeah. risk with all, like, blockchain.info, right. you run that risk with that. Because right. if, if somebody does that, you see what I'm saying? Right, but if it's you open sourced and you have a signature where people can view it and then it's distributed some other way, then it's a little safe. But if you look at it, okay, that's a, good, that's a great argument, but if you look at it, some of these wallets have been open source have not been like updated for months. So the bad code could already be in there, 
right? Like if that's the – see, yeah, no, nah, I mean not necessarily because they don't push it all the time. People don't always push it and they change it. Like blockchain has to have had an update. Y'all don't think blockchain.info has had an update since when's the last time they pushed? It's like – so it was a while ago. So, I mean, that's the thing. I mean, we we have to weigh it out. The big thing for us is I feel like open sourcing it would allow more bad actors to know what to do to get in it and do all of that. And to, to be completely on front street, all of those libraries that we use are the same libraries that these guys probably use, that everybody uses as far as the pure open source libraries to do transactions. So the only part we changed was the fact that it's beautiful. <laughs> It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? Any other questions? Great questions, man. One more question. And uh, if not, uh, Lamar, you can uh, head into some closing statements and convince uh, us one more closing time. Closing statement, bro. love will. That's it. Love will. You ask what love will do, it will. That's the way it is. So.